lecture in this module that has been dealing with membrane proteins and transport. We will talk about the electron transport chain in this lecture. What we are going to look at is we are going to look at oxidative phosphorylation, the electron transport chain and ATP synthase, which we have looked at in motor proteins as well, and the aspects of oxidative phosphorylation. The importance in mitochondrial aerobic respiration is evident from the fact that this is a life process involved throughout, involved in a way that is necessary for life processes. This involves several complexes that are proteins that are present in the membrane. As we go forward, we will see how these proteins work and what the specific aspects of the electron transport chain are. In mitochondrial aerobic respiration, we have the process of glycolysis that occurs outside in the cytoplasm, the pyruvate that is transferred into the mitochondria, the citric acid cycle that occurs in the mitochondria, followed by this important step of oxidative phosphorylation. So the glycolysis if we consider this as the overall cell where we have glycolysis that takes place in the cytoplasm, the citric acid cycle occurs in the mitochondrial matrix and oxidative metabolism occurs in these inner folded mitochondrial membrane known as the cristate. So if this is the outer membrane which we know is a lipid bilayer itself, and we have the inner criste, the folded membrane, which is also a bilayer. We will see these as we go along. What we have is we have this as the outer membrane, this as the inner membrane, and this is the intermembrane space where a lot of activity occurs in terms of energetics associated with the cell. In terms of oxidative phosphorylation, the electron transport chain. So when we look at mitochondrial aerobic respiration, this is what we, the folds of the membrane known as the criste. We have the outer membrane, the intermembrane space and the inner membrane. We have the glucose breakdown formation of pyruvate that then has several electrons that get into the mitochondria. We have the pyruvate that enters the mitochondria. The process now occurs in a manner where we have the pyruvate release carbon dioxide, the NADH and NAD activities we will see in a moment, the acetyl coenzyme A resulting in pyruvate oxidation that would lead to the TCA cycle in the production of carbon dioxide, ATP, FADH2, and 3NADH. These electron transport processes are then important in the way they act, in the way they work with the different complexes that are embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane, the proton transfer that occurs in several ways to finally lead from oxygen to water. In this process, we have electron transport. We have proton pumps that are embedded in the membrane. Pumps that work in a fashion that require energy to transport the proton from a lower energy, lower proton concentration to a higher proton concentration. A topic that we visited when we considered transport across membranes. We have also ATP synthase 
where ATP is produced from ADP plus PI, a very common motor protein that is also a membrane protein. So this ATP synthesis also occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So this membrane and the membrane proteins associated with this are extremely important in their activity. If we now look at this inner membrane in a larger perspective, we have several complexes associated with the process. The four complexes marked complex 1, complex 2, complex 3, and complex 4 comprise what is known as the electron transport chain. We have the ATPase involved here, where ATP synthase, where ATP is produced from ADP and PI. And all this occurs in the inner mitochondrial membrane. We will look at the complexes, the proteins involved in the complexes, and we will see how the electron transport occurs in the final expression or the final production of water. The process of oxidative phosphorylation itself <clears throat> is the fourth step of the cellular respiration that generates most of the energy involved in cellular respiration. All aerobic organisms require the process of oxidative phosphorylation to produce the basic energy by generating ATP by an ATP synthesizing enzyme, which we called ATP synthase. We have seen the mechanism of action of ATP synthase in a previous lecture. And this occurs through a process called electron transport in a series of complexes. The electron transport chain itself has electrons that are captured from donor molecules. These donor molecules are NADH and FADH2. These electrons are transferred through a series of protein-bound redox centers that are, as we saw, embedded in the mitochondrial membrane. And finally, they will couple themselves with ATP synthase. So what happens is when we have the proton, we have the electrons, we have the cascade of reactions in the electron transport chain. This will then, with the oxygen, produce water in the processes involved in the electron transport chain. If we look at the thermodynamics of electron transport, we see that this is the overall reaction, but it is coupled with this reaction involved in the electron flow through the electron transport chain. E0 is the voltage generated by the reaction of these individual half cells, as we can see, under standard biochemical conditions. The half zero reaction, so this is our overall reaction when we consider the different half cells, and we get a value of the free energy change associated with this, a favorable value. So the oxidation of one mole of NADH by oxygen that is the transfer of two electrons, as we saw in the previous slide, releases this amount of free energy under standard. So the change in free energy is this amount, minus 218 kilojoules per mole, under standard biochemical conditions. The associated energetics with the different complexes are given here, and we can see that we have favorable cases as we go along in the energetics. In the electron transport oxidative phosphorylation that takes place in the inner membrane of the mitochondria, this 
is, as we realize, a major source of ATP in aerobic respiration and thus is an extremely important process that occurs. When glucose is completely oxidized to carbon dioxide and H2O, 26 of the 30 molecules of ATP formed are generated through this process of oxidative phosphorylation. So we go back to our complex system where we have our electron transport chain comprised of the four complex systems, complex one, two, three, and four, and finally ATP synthase that is going to generate the ATP, all embedded as membrane proteins in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Complex 1 is NADH dehydrogenase complex or also known as the NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase. In this, the complex, there is the molecule flavin mononucleotide, FMN, eight iron sulfur clusters, which we visited in, we went to came across in our metalloproteins lecture. NADH, <clears throat> that is donated from glycolysis. And two electrons that are generated from the citric acid cycle oxidation that occurs in the mitochondria. So all this together gives us our complex one. And what happens in this process is the complex is responsible for accepting electrons from NADPH that is transferred to FMN. The accepted electrons then move to the iron sulfur clusters and finally from the iron sulfur cluster to the coenzyme Q. Four hydrogen ions are pumped from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space that generates the electrochemical gradient. And this complex one is known to have a role in programmed cell death. So what happens in this case is the complex one that is NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase. A series of processes occur and the overall reaction is this where we have the NADH, H+, and the coenzyme Q, four H+, in, are taken to four H+, out, into the intermembrane space, and we have a reduction of coenzyme Q to coenzyme Q, H2. Now, without going into the details of the mechanisms involved, the idea here is to realize the complexity of these membrane proteins and the way they act in conjunction with other cofactors and protons, creating this transport across the membrane in terms of a proton pump, in terms of several activities, cascades of reactions that occur. So when we look at NAD plus oxidized, we see that we can have the two electron 2H plus system resulting in our change at this point here where we have reduced NADH. When we see FMN, the oxidized part of FMN, this is also going to get reduced where we see the reduction over here, the nitrogens that have accepted the protons. The other process where we have ubiquinone to ubiquinol, Q going to QH2 that we looked at, where we have the quinone moiety, which is this moiety, form the quinol, quinol moiety. So these are the reactions that generally occur in this 
specific complex one. In complex two, we are looking at a protein succinate dehydrogenase or also known as succinate CoQ reductase. In this case, electrons are delivered from succinate to the quinone pool via flavine adenine dinucleotide, FAD, that in the process gets reduced. So succinate is oxidized to fumarate and two electrons pass from FAD to the iron sulfur cluster and then to coenzyme Q. There are no protons pumped out through the membrane in complex 2. So again, we have our intermembrane space, the matrix of the mitochondria and this is where we have our embedded protein in the inner mitochondrial membrane. The overall reaction is where we have the succinate form the fumarate. In the process, generate protons in the matrix that are then used, taken up by FADH2 to reduce coenzyme Q. So this is the overall process where we have succinate go to fumarate in the event FAD goes to FADH2. This is the series of reactions that occur where we have the FES, the iron sulfur complex, assist in the electron transfer for the process to occur in complex 2. In complex 3, this is a coenzyme Q cytochrome C reductase or cytochrome BC1 complex as it is called. This catalyzes the oxidation of QH2 that had been formed. It reduces cytochrome C and ferritin, a molecule involved in iron transfer. And the reduced QHT on one side of the mitochondrial membrane the QHT is oxidized to coenzyme Q on the other side and as a result, there is a proton gradient formed. So, this is then utilized later on in the next complex. So, we have these proteins. We have the iron sulfur protein. We have the cytochrome complexes, the cytochrome B with a specific heme type, B type heme as it is called, a cytochrome C1 with a C type heme. Now these transmembrane helices bind to the B type heme and what happens is the FES complex is anchored by the transmembrane helices that extend into the intermembrane space. Following this, we have the process occur where we have a series of reactions known as the Q cycle mechanism, where we have the intermembrane space, the matrix, complex 3 embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane, and we have the formation of Q from the 2QH2. And what we have is the involvement of the cytochrome C proteins here, where we have the electron transfer. In the Q cycle mechanism, there are two steps where we have the Q cycle consisting of ubiquinol, that is CoQH2, and ubiquinone, CoQ. We have this CoQH2 Co -QH2 bind to two separate sites on complex 3. As a result, there is a CoQH2 oxidized at the site of the complex with a very high activation barrier. The generated electron is then transferred to a high potential chain that consists of these iron sulfur cluster and the two cytochromes involved. And in step two, we have a new CoQH to bind to the first site and transfer two electrons 
and two more protons are released in a similar fashion. Now, given that this course is rather related to protein chemistry, I would expect an idea related to the membrane proteins involved here and their activity related in this case. So in the cytochrome C protein is a water-soluble small heme protein of the electron transfer chain. It is loosely associated with the inner membrane of the mitochondria and it carries one electron and transfers the electron between complexes 3 and 4. As a result, we have cytochrome C reductase, cytochrome C oxidase. The heme C is involved in the cytochrome C protein. In complex 4, which is cytochrome C oxidase, we have again a membrane bound protein that receives electrons from cytochrome C and transfers this to oxygen to produce the water within the mitochondrial matrix. So this is what we observe here where we have our water are formed from the oxygen. So we have the different aspects of cytochrome C oxidase mentioned here where we have two hemes, cytochrome A and cytochrome A3 and two copper centers CUA and CUB which we looked at in metalloproteins. This oxidizes cytochrome C and transfers the electrons to oxygen and converts oxygen to water and the four protons are transported to the intermembrane space that contribute to the required proton gradient. Following this, we have two electrons that are donated, transported th through the copper A and the cytochrome A sites to a specific center where we have the reduction of Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus and Cu2 plus to Cu. In a unique mechanism where we have, therefore, the cytochromes associated with oxygen molecules being reduced to then we have, therefore, the oxygen, the protons, and finally, the electron transfer that is going to lead to the formation of water. And the electrons donated from the cytochrome C come through the copper system. And we have the two hemes associated with this protein in the inter mitochondria, inner membrane of the mitochondria. When we look at the different porphyrin rings in the cytochromes, we see there is heme C, heme B and heme A. Each of them have their characteristics that can be studied to look at the specific aspects of the complex systems. The absorption spectra that we see has a specific characteristic. One characteristic, for example, in cytochrome C shown here, is the Y band, the beta and the alpha. The Y band is known as the sorid band. The sorid band is mostly due to an electron dipole movement that permits pi pi star transitions and it is used to characterize the absorption of heme containing cytochromes. And the alpha peak distinctly varies with the specific reduced cytochrome species. So if we look at the different types, we have the sorate band, the beta and the alpha. And these are the absorption spectra that are observed for the specific types of cytochromes. For ATP synthase, just to complete the discussion here, this phosphorylates ADP to form ATP and is driven by the proton motive force that is generated by the proton concentration gradient that is, a, that is a consequence of our electron transport chain. So what we have is we have the positive side of the mitochondrial matrix 
and we have the negative side of the inner mitochondrial membrane. And then what happens is the energetically unfavorable ATP synthesis is driven by this flux of protons across the membrane by the proton gradient. And this is our series of steps that occur in the proton pump that we observe. This is our inner mitochondrial membrane, the cytosolic medium and the exoplasmic medium. And what happens in this specific process is we have the proton transfer in this case. And as the proton moves, we have specific movement occur. This proton transfer then occurs, resulting in the formation of ATP through the ATP pump from ADP and PI. So in the electron transferring flavoproteins that we see in this whole process that we looked at, we have the different complexes 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we look at FADH2 that in eukaryotes is another electron donating molecule that is present in the glycolysis and of the citric acid cycle. It is oxidized to FAD and coenzyme Q in the process it is reduced to 4QH2. When we look at flavoproteins in general, they contain one or more flavin nucleotides, FAD or FMN, as redox factors or co-substrates. They are localized in the mitochondria for their specific activity and they are involved in the oxidative degradation of pyruvate fatty acids and amino acids and most importantly in electron transport. If we look at the specific factors that affect oxidative phosphorylation, we have respiratory chain inhibitors, a substance that can block the electron transport in event inhibit the oxidation process. Rotenones are known as respiratory chain inhibitors. They can bind to the iron sulfur proteins in NADHQ reductase and inhibit the transportation of electrons from NADH to CoQ in complex 1. Antimycin A and Dimercaptopropanol can inhibit the electron transfer between cytochrome B and cytochrome C1. So this will in turn infect complex 3 and complex 4. And then we can also have other small molecules that inhibit cytochrome oxidase, thus blocking electron transport. So in the whole scheme of things that we have seen, we look at a specific potential gradient, complex 1 involving the NADH dehydrogenase, complex 2 the succinate dehydrogenase, complex 3 the cytochrome BC1, and complex 4 the cytochrome C oxidase. All this occurrence leads to proton pumping. This proton pumped into the intermembrane space of the mitochondria is then used up by the proton pump in ATP synthase that results in our production of ATP. If we go to the grand scheme of things in the mitochondria, therefore, we see that we have the intermembrane space here where we have a low pH a high H plus concentration. Nevertheless, this electron transport chain that results in this final reaction forming H2O from water pumps these protons into the intermembrane space that is then utilized by our ATP synthase in the production of ATP. So we looked at a series of membrane brown proteins. In our module that dealt with membrane proteins, we looked at integral membrane proteins, peripheral membrane proteins, what we meant by transmembrane segments, 
membrane transport, passive and active transport, and finally, the electron transport chain. This is an extremely important topic for membrane proteins, for protein chemistry in general, because it in, involves the very important process of oxidative phosphorylation. This is the end of module 9, Membrane Proteins and Transport. These are the books. Thank you.